Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Fuji, Pentax, all of them has got a, an, an adhesive tape at the bottom of the camera and behind the shutter. So when you turn your camera on and off, keep it in this position. So that vibration is like half a second. The dust falls down because dust is heavier than air, so it can sit on an adhesive uh, a, a tape at the bottom of the camera and it will not come back into the camera. Uh, it's difficult for the guys with long lenses because it's heavy, so you're holding it there, you're switching it on and off, but you will have more dust coming back time and time again because it just gets blown back into the camera. Um, so that's just a, a, nobody, it's not in a manual anywhere, it's just something that nobody will teach you. Um, sensor cleaning is good. Uh, in places like Durban, Cape Town, you've got moist air, not as much as Durban, but the moist air dust sits on a sensor and it actually sticks. So um, your normal blowout system, dry blowout, will not work. You blow it and that one speck will always be there, so, so you can't remove it. Uh, recommend a wet clean for that. Now, I don't know about other companies, I do a wet clean through the mirror box, which is not a complete service, but I clean the mirror box out. Um, the, the entire mirror box, your, your viewfinder, and whatever I can get to without having to dismantle it. Um, the wet clean helps a lot more because you get rid of all the dust and you actually pull it out of the camera where the blowout just blows everything back in behind the shutter and two months later, it's on the sensor again. Um, it, yeah, do that more, more often than not because that gets rid of a lot of dust that's in the camera instead of just doing a service every six months, you can do a service once a year when you do this kind of thing. Um, again, clean bags and a brush. So when you're, going, uh, uh, when you're shooting and you've got to shoot on the beach and it's windy and it's dusty, go buy yourself one or two brushes. Um, before you put it back into your bag, just give it a good wipe down to get rid of all the sand. Now, use a brush that uh, is a bit more expensive. They don't lose the uh, bristles. So you can actually get into all the small little nicks to get the sand out. Um, that sand, if you don't get it out, you start shooting again, you're turning wheels, it goes in deeper and deeper into your camera, causing more, more, um, more friction problems and the dials that get stuck and gears that get stuck. So <coughs> very good tool to have in your camera bag. Um, just before you put it in the bag, or if you don't have time, then get a plastic packet, put your camera in the plastic packet and do it at home, just so that you can keep the cameras clean and keep the sand out of the bag as well. Um, Lint-free and microfiber cloths and silica gel, also a good thing to have in your bags. Um, if you're in the beach and get that moist air coming, just brush it down. Uh, you can actually spray a bit of mist mint on the cloth just to keep that salty air off the camera. Um, that moist little bit of wetness clean it up, brush it down with a brush and put it back in the bag. Uh, the lint-free cloths are very nice for that. And then these babies, always. Um, they absorb moisture that is on the camera. They get rid of anything that might cause problems later. Um, I have a few of them I'm looking into buying and maybe just putting my brand on there and I will just hand it out to my customers as they come in because it's always a very good thing to keep in there. Um, oh, the, the sensor cleaning swabs from earlier on, it's basically, that's a 1.6 crop sensor and that's full frame sensor. Um, they don't make 1.5, so the Fujis are difficult to clean, but um, that's, that's basically what we use. Um, for me, it's very easy to use, but then if I get to the garage and I want to clean my own windscreen, there's always streaks. So those guys do it every single day. They don't, well, it's supposed to not leave streaks, but they don't leave streaks. Um, I've been doing it so long, so I can give it one or two wipes and it's clean, where I've seen people sit for two days just trying to get that one mark that keeps on reappearing there. Um, yeah, that's uh, tools for your bag that you can actually keep, maybe in a separate bag in your boot, just for use for later stage. Water damage. Um, when your gear gets wet, rice, I don't think it works. That's, in my honest opinion, it doesn't work. Um, the reason I say so, rice will absorb moisture, but it needs to touch the moisture. So for you to get 
rice inside your camera to get all the water out, you need to bring it to me to get, to get all the rice out. So, <laughs> either way, um, this guy, unfortunately, he was in the water and he couldn't get out quick enough, so it was completely flooded. Um, and then also he left the battery in. So, when you're leaving um, electronic uh, current on the circuit, it just corrodes more and more and more. So you need to pull your battery out immediately. You reduce chances of um, corrosion um, over the full camera. If you're insured, and I hope no insurance companies are looking, keep the battery in. Kill it, replace it, it's better. Um, yeah, or put it in rice and then I'll clean out the rice. Either way. <laughs> Filters, uh, there's a lot of good and bad about filters. Um, if your camera falls in sand and you've got a filter on, your lens is protected. You take the filter off, you can either clean it under a tap or you can throw it away, whatever you feel like, but your lens is protected. Your lens will be dry, there will be no sand or scratches on your lens element. Um, using a normal UV glass protector filter is good um, because if you bump your lens, a front element costs anything from 1,200 Rand up to 5,000 Rand just for the element. Um, that's your main element on any lenses. Um, so if there's a scratch on it, you'll get flare, they, you'll get problems. Um, a filter, your cheapest ones, anything from 100 to uh, 250, or you can go uh, the more expensive BMW. Uh, Canon sells a range of uh, filters as well, but you're paying 1,400 Rand for a filter. Um, the thicker, more expensive filters are better to use as well because they don't warp. So your cheaper filters will warp, causing focus issues. Um, and the bigger the filter, the easier, um, or the bigger the problem. So if you've got a 77, 82, or, or any large filters, buy the more expensive ones because they don't warp. You don't get focus issues on them. Um, I've seen many people come in and they've been complaining about focus issues. You turn the filter off, you give it back to them, and they're happy. Um, so filters are good, but they can also be bad. I know a lot of photographers buy the cheap ones and they literally use it as a front cap. So they leave it on there until they shoot, they turn it off, put it in the back pocket, when they're done, they put it back on the lens. Front caps are easier, but they prefer it that way. Um, so yeah, that's me. Any questions regarding maintenance, care, repairs? Uh, pricing is very difficult to do for anybody. I can't give pricing until I've seen a camera or looked at a camera. Um, I mean, 1855, lens service is 600 rand, a 402.8 is 4,500 rand. So anything in between can be there. Yeah. How often do you recommend for your camera body to be cleaned? Okay, cleaning, uh, depending on how you use it. If it's gonna be used in studio only and you never get outside, uh, once every two years you can have it serviced. Um, if you're shooting studio and out outside beach shots, that kind of thing, once a year. If you're shooting outside constantly, every six months. So, yeah, depending on use. And same with lenses as well. Same with lenses as well, yeah. Do you have any issues with, like, some of the brands, the big-name brands, they don't want other people touching their cameras yes. when you want <laughs> services? Um, <laughs> yeah. well, yes. Um, there's one or two particular brands that we're talking about. Um, they, they're not the brand themselves, um, so they are distributors, so they want to keep control of the product. Um, I worked uh, for Canon, I will now be the Fuji agent, uh, we're just waiting for, uh, for, for a few tools. But um, there's a lot of tools that you need to do it 100% specific to factory compliance. Um, I've actually had people come from other brands come to me, which I don't have the exact tools but I've got the knowledge on it and I will be able to calibrate the product better than they actually do because I put more care into what I want to give the customer. Um, so space wise um, I'm talking to one of my customers who's up in China a lot so we're going to start getting in space for the other brands. Um, tools wise slightly limited but you can still get the same quality service that you get from them and quicker turnaround time from me. Yeah. Um, no, lenses, I think was Canon ultrasonic was is it? Uh, yeah, ultrasonic. Yeah. Some people say when you leave that mechanism on, 
Yes. While switching the camera off, it still stays in yes. active. Okay. It's not good. Um, if you take the lens off quickly and without switching it off or without leaving the button for about two seconds, your your eyes is still floating. Um, VR, IS, OS, it's still floating. So there's a mechanical lock that actually locks the lens in position when the eyes is off. So when it's floating, it's bouncing around inside, knocking these springs, these levers, these magnets that's all now loose and it's not under electronic control. So when you turn the camera off, it does a mechanical lock to lock the lens in position to safeguard from that. Those silicon gel packs, where can I get some of those? Say again, sorry? The silicon gel packs. Yes. Um, I actually looked last night. they available on <laughs> eBay and a few other sites. Um, I can get locally in 20 kilogram bags. Uh, so I'm just looking for somebody that can actually pack them for me and then I'll just advertise wherever. Um, so it, it is literally probably about five rand a bag, uh, depending on size. Um, and yeah, it's, it is something. Otherwise, uh, what I used to do with my ex-wife, I used to steal it out of her shoe boxes. Um, so. Now I don't have an ex-wife, or she doesn't live with me anymore, so I can't steal it out of her boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any questions, guys, though? Uh, I see on the panel, what are yes. IR conversions? Uh, infrared conversions. You um, can actually speak to Kim Stevens. She's done her 5D. Um, so infrared photography is actually awesome. It's, it's an it's a art form. Um, it's basically contemporary art kind of thing. So basically, you will see a tree in green. You put your converter filters in, and you shoot, and that tree comes out white, and everything else different shaded. There's, there's a bit of a trick to it. I'll put a link on Facebook to um, one or two guys that are doing it in uh, Cape Town. And then also, I do all the conversions, but they've got the knowledge of what filters. So there's a lot of filters that you can use, uh, different thicknesses, different colors. Um, but, but you need to find out exactly what you want to do. And it's, it's an awesome. Once you get into it, it's just such amazing pictures. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. So have a look at that. Quick one on the live streaming comments. Guys, please go comment uh, your questions for Raymond. Uh, coming from Yana, another photography. How often do you need to calibrate your lenses? Uh, depending on what products. Um, your high-end lenses, uh, they are built better, so it takes a little bit longer for them to go out. Um, I found with a few of the, the up-and-coming... I don't want to call it generic brands because they're actually very good, but um, they they tend to go out after two or three years. Um, so they th their build quality is not as good as your high-end professional lenses. Um, but a good tweak and turn of a few colors and scrutinizing it is back up and running sharp again. So I'm just going to quickly um, ask a question myself. Um, we live in Cape Town, a lot of times you grab your tripod, you go to the beach, you do a beach shoot. How often should you clean your, your, your tripods with a certain material or because washing the salt water off with water, um, is it enough? Do you need yeah. to... Is um, a little bit more on that because I know there's a lot of Cape Town yeah, photographers going to the beach, put their stand in the beach and they just go pack it away. Yeah. Um, Maybe you just get a bigger brush, harder bristles for that. Um, try to get into all of the little... Um, uh, hinges on, on the locks. Try to get all the sand out. Um, a wet cloth, I wouldn't say water, but a wet cloth or damp cloth, uh, just wipe it down. And this stuff is brilliant. It, it's, um, I mean, all surface. Uh, you spray it onto something, dab the brush in there, and then, then you brush it off. Or, or uh, 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 you can spray it onto a cloth and just wipe it down. Yeah, and it leaves a fine wax layer on it. So, like it protects your, uh, uh, your furniture, it protects your cameras, it protects your, your tripods. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also repair tripods and replace parts on that. So. Um, anyone still have a question in here? Yeah? Um, okay, from my side, um, Raymond, just explain to the, the people out in here and on the live stream, <coughs> what brands do you work on and what service can you deliver in okay. the digital cameras? Um, 
<laughs> I do repairs, servicing, calibration on any and every brand that there is. Um, as long as I can get spares for it, I can replace parts. If it's just a service or a calibration that needs to be done, all lens construction and camera construction is basically the same. So, um, uh, yeah, all my calibrations are mechanical, manual uh, calibrations. It's not electronic like um, they do through uh, uh, your uh, your designated agencies, um, because the electronic stuff is basically just tweaking odds and ends to get it better um, without every without having to actually turn the glass. So. What happens in your lenses is the glass basically shifts slightly, tilts or shifts a little bit out, and that causes your soft focus, or with a knock, one element might move slightly that way. So getting that aligned will, cause, uh, will rectify all your focus problems. Um, and mechanically, you, or uh, with, with your electronic adjustments, you can shift a little bit forwards and backwards, but you can never get it tilt and, and centering in. So, yeah. Another one from the live stream comments, Salia Fisser, will Canon lenses be sharp straight out of the box, uh, Canon or any brand for that matter, or do you need to calibrate it uh, on your camera body? Um, there was a certain lens, I don't want to name some name brands, but there was a lens that everybody in South Africa complained about when they put it on, it's just soft. Um, I calibrated a couple of them, and there was a word spread that if you buy this lens, first go to Raymond, he makes it sharp, <laughs> and then, yeah. So, um, factory has got a tolerance they need to work to. So, there's a thousand lenses coming through. We can tweak it up to a point, but then they have to let it go, and it gets boxed. Um, I see 100% as a tolerance instead of 98%, and that's, yeah, so. Uh, somebody in the last room said they heard Kurt laughing. Uh, <laughs> it was very funny. Um, in terms of uh, tripods and um, besides cameras and lenses, what yeah. else is there that you got? Okay, um, tripods, yeah. flashes, Godox, um, Allen Crum, anything you've got, anything you can bring in. If it's electronic, if it's photographic related, I repair it. Um, if a filter falls apart, I'll put it back together for you. There's only three parts, but I'll, yeah. Especially SD cards, uh, Raymond can yeah. even, because sometimes the smaller SD cards, they I can actually break in half, and you can, uh, it's solder? Yeah, solder, solder repair, those little fine, um, So if fine you have a card solder. that's uh, dysfunctional, yeah, bring it to digital camera service. Yeah. Um, then also for the Joba clients, Raymond, yeah. um, there's a lot of Joba clients that also want to need a, a little bit more about can they use Cape Town based yes, uh, repair centers? Can you just quickly share um, that? My turnaround time is two to three days from your go ahead. So if you ship it down to me on a courier overnight, I receive it on a Tuesday morning. I quote you by Tuesday afternoon, we get it back by Thursday, so you can have it back by Friday. It saves you driving an hour and a half in Joburg traffic, spending 200 Rand on petrol, um, and then driving another hour and a half to go fetch it. So. Photographers, three hours from their desk. It's a lot of editing not getting done. So just uh, send it via courier and I will sort it out for you in Cape Town. Um, quickly, some questions floating around. Anybody? How did you get started with this? What got you into camera repairs? I, I fell into it literally. Um, I, I was walking in St. George's Mall with a backpack going from restaurant to restaurant repairing fridges and stoves and toasters and all that kind of stuff. And there was one coffee shop that I was always at on a Friday afternoon having a beer. And myself and this one guy started chatting. He said, okay, so you are technical. Come see if you can open a camera up and, and, and then put it back together in the same condition. So um, he gave me an Olympus Mu Zoom. It's a very compact film camera those years. Um, I opened it up, it wasn't working, um, I saw sand, I took the sand out, put it back together and he was amazed because his technicians could never fix it. So I was like, are you sure you haven't, so I, I mean, I didn't even know photography then, I didn't, I earned this little Fuji with a green button that charges the flash and you wind the film on with a, yeah. So 
just found into that, that was at uh, Cape Camry Repairs in 2002. Um, from there, I went to Joburg, joined uh, um, a camera tech, uh, your Canon agents, worked for them two and a half years there, then opened a branch here in Cape Town, another five or six years here, uh, there. Went to photographic repairs where I worked on everything again, um, and yeah, then went on my own last year, May. Another one on the live stream, uh, shout out to Flash. Uh, thanks to Raymond for always keeping our gear in top shape, tip top shape. And uh, then Marina van der Walt. Go Raymond, he saved me from buying a new camera by fixing my current camera. Thanks, it's tax. Okay. Um, <laughs> another from Marlene de, Gra uh, de Grange. Uh, Grange de yes. Raymond, do you have access for inserting a specific color filter inside the camera? for IR conversion or do you only do the full spectrum? I do now, Marlene. Um, I've just uh, con or got in touch with a guy about two weeks ago. So um, whoever is looking for IR filters, I will put them in touch with Johan Kutsia. Um, he gives them the full breakdown of what you need for what photography you want and how you want to do it. And then we sort it out from there. So he, he will order the part and I will fit it. Yeah, guys, keep get the uh, questions coming. We're still going to have a nice open discussion with Raymond. If you have any questions, feel free to ask Raymond on the live stream uh, on our Lightline Studio Facebook page. If you're busy watching as you can hear me. Uh, <laughs> please uh, let it come in. Um, drones. Yes. Uh, I see. Just touch a little bit about uh, repairs on drones. Uh, okay. Uh, drones are a little bit of a difficult one. Um, there's a lot of companies in South Africa doing it. Um, spares, they only buy complete gimbals and replace big parts. So if you've got a problem on the camera of the drone, they just replace a whole unit instead of replacing one arm that's broken. Um, I've actually also last week got in touch with guys in Joburg that can supply me individual parts, motors. Uh, arms and that kind of thing. So drones will become bigger uh, with digital camera services within the next month or two as soon as I get the space in and get that started running. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so in terms of, uh, I know there's some people that, I, I, I was one of those persons that opened up my camera and tried to to fix it myself. Super and glue. Ending, and yeah, yeah, I super glued <laughs> my <laughs> top screw because I didn't have that small little. And then the, 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 the okay, glue. so the super glue ran out into the camera. It's lying on the light meter. He still uses it uh, <laughs> for video, still don't need to fix it. <laughs> but uh, so the super glue went into the light meter, which now is completely dark. Um, only Nielus knows what settings to use it in. That's manual, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, just briefly touch around um, data recovery, basic data yes. recovery on cards and, 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 and hard drives. Yes. Okay. So CF cards, SD cards, flash drives, hard drives. I can recover data if they are lost. Um, hard drive repairs. Uh, there's two main guys in Cape Town that that I can send it or refer to. Um, also, again, just this week, somebody spoke to me about a guy in Joburg that's actually quite cool. So I'm going to make contact with him to see what, what kind of service we can provide the customers from here. Um, recovering deleted or lost or formatted cards, I can do to a degree. I've had one two, three weeks ago where there's basically four weddings after the card was deleted and formatted four times. I went back and I got five weddings back. Um, so. Yeah, it was, they lost the ceremony and there's like nowhere else there's any pictures except for on that card and I went to get it. So she's happy. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, what's the best way to uh, look after your memory cards while you're still using it so that they don't get damaged or like for example in, in my bag I've got um, something that I keep all my cards in, but yes. what's the best way to maintain your card so that you don't get to a point where the card is corrupt or bent or damaged? Um, look, a card has only got a certain amount of formats that you can do on it, then it starts, it, it, it's like a battery's got two years lifespan. Card, you can only do a certain amount of formats. If I'm not mistaken, SanDisk is a thousand formats. Um, then it, it will start getting uh, uh, completely uh, jambled up inside. But um, format it in the camera before shoot. 
make sure you've got everything saved before you format it. Um, but I would say format it because just by deleting images, um, you keep those folders in a subfolder which is hidden, which I can go into. But just by deleting it, you fill the card up from the bottom. And you'll see if you put a card or a hard drive in, if it's a 60, four gig card, it will show 61 point something available space after formatting. So all your data is going to lie in that little section. And the more you format, that section gets bigger and the rest gets smaller. So um, I, 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 I don't like punting brands because I feel bad for the other guys, but um, Lexa and Sanders are your two top brands in South Africa. Um, I prefer Sanders because Sanders is a much better bolt. Um, when you open up a Lexar card, it's a very thin board with chips soldered onto it. Uh, SanDisk is a solid chip. There's no board. It's a solid chip with all the plugs. There's nothing that you can take off or that can bend or break. Where um, If a Lexar card bends, that board bends and it breaks the chip off the board. And yeah, so uh, SanDisk, you can actually drill a hole through it and it's, you can put it in the freezer, take it out, chip the water off, or uh, I mean the ice off and it works again. Yeah. I've taken plenty of them out of my pocket from after a washing machine and it just works. <laughs> it just keeps on working, so. Um, just a, another question from my side. Um, there's a lot of people that scared buying secondhand gear um, mm. because they think the lenses are either old or overused or not sharp. Is that a big concern or is it um, easy to come to you and say, listen, I've bought a second-hand lens, I'm not sure, can you just quickly calibrate it for yeah. me? Okay. I think just touching um, that as well. I do insurance reports on damage stuff, but I also do just a full check and test for people. So I had a customer last week. Um, you bring the gear in, you speak to the seller or the buyer, and, and uh, the seller agrees that they're gonna bring it in. Um, if you're unsafe with the seller or the buyer, and you don't know if you can meet them at Cape Gate KFC, um, Meet them here. So, so I mean, uh, you both come in, you book it in with me. I'll give a report out to both, the same report. And if both are happy, the buyer can pay the seller. The seller lets me know, okay, it's safe. I've got my money and the buyer can pick that up from me. So it's a safe place where you can actually buy and sell. There's a 300 rand inspection fee basically that I charge for that. Um, but that makes everybody's safe. It's like, you know you get your money, you know they are happy to meet you, so, yeah. Is there anything that you should be, be on the lookout for when buying a second-hand camera? I'm talking about uh, how many uh, actuations the camera have because... Yeah, actuations are... Tips on, on, on buying second-hand yes, gear. Yes, okay. Um, second-hand gear, look at your glass if they scratched. Um, most of the times, the sellers are very upfront, say, look, it's well used. Um, if you're going to buy something from Nealis, you know it's going to have 950,000 shots on the clock. Um, and they, because they work hard. Uh, but then, according to the price and what you're buying, it's like, okay, replace the shutter and that kind of thing. Um, sh shutter counts are reference that the manufacturers put there that they have tested it up until to a certain point where they found it working continuously. Um, 5D Mark III, for instance, goes way above what they rated it as. Uh, it's not a guarantee, it's not a um, set to go to. Um, very good looking cameras that, that if you buy a 5D three with 5,000 shots in it, I'm gonna be very skeptical about it because it's been lying in a cupboard for the past four years. And something lying in a cupboard is like a car standing in a garage for four years. You're not going to start it because everything is seized up inside. So I would rather buy the 951 because I know it's been working and it's going to keep on going. Uh, and it, you know, it's, a, it's a very very difficult one. So, But lenses, uh, turn your focus ring, turn your zoom ring, feel if there's anything stuck. Listen for sand in between the barrels. Um, close your aperture full, zoom in and out while shooting with... Uh, at, at like f22 if you get an error then your aperture is faulty uh, make sure the usm goes all the way from infinity to one meter and back to infinity again freely because then you know your usm is working um, and check for sharpness sharpness is easy to check you find something with lines close by shoot f2.8 or widest open aperture that you can do 
and see the resolution on the screen. Uh, corner to corner, make sure that it's sharp. And um, yeah, bodies, uh, just feel and taste all the buttons, make sure it's, it's good and clean. <coughs> Raymond, with the mirrorless and the normal yes. DSLR, do the, is the, the shutter count or the shutter life ex, um, expectancy? Yeah, because you don't use the mirror or uh, the shutter in a mirrorless, actually. Um, I mean, if you turn it off to silent shutter, your shutter stays open all the time and it uses just electronics. So um, I, I, um, I wouldn't even look at that. Uh, it, it's also people using a 5D Mark III uh, for video. Um, although that shutter opens 5,000 times in a four-month four shoot, that 5,000 doesn't get counted because he's using it for video and not for shooting. So it's, uh, you can't really tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really difficult. Yeah. Speak to the person. If he sounds honest and he looks honest, still judge. Yeah, actually, on that on that uh, topic, buying second-hand gear, we always what we do is we test the, the the sharpness of the lens, the camera if it's working, but we don't test the earphone jack or the mic jack and stuff yeah. like that. It's small stuff. And then six right. months down the line, you want to you, you plug in your USB or your earphones, and then man, why yeah. is this not working? And yeah. then the guy that you sold you the camera is long gone. So um, what we will do is we will um, set up a list of yeah. things to check out when buying second-hand gear to go through, check, uh, especially on the backside, is the, is the connectors of the lens and the body. There's sometimes you, when somebody sells something, either you have to ask yourself a question, why is he selling the camera? Not all the guys that selling second-hand is something wrong with the camera, but just do your ins uh, some inspections mm. on your camera gear, just to make sure it's still in top Something uh, uh, like that, for example, these, these uh, dials um, on all cameras, if they get slightly dirty inside, sand or dust, or a little bit of moisture falls in them or something like that, um, you can turn, then it skips one, turns two, goes three <laughs> back, and so just make sure that every time you turn, it goes up a third of a stop or whatever it is uh, 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 set on, because you don't, normally just look and you shoot, when you're shooting you see something's not right but you don't always click. So once you actually look at the button and what it does then you start realizing that there's a problem with that button. And to repair a button you have to strip the whole camera. You can't just blow something in there. Yeah. Anything else? For me? Anything else? Last two questions. Thank you. You can follow us on Instagram at Digital Camera Services. Um, there's a WhatsApp line. If you have any questions, you can just um, have a look at 0408681307 if you have any questions. Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, just for today, my direct line. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions, just ask, drop him a message. He's very uh, good on social media. He's very on it. Um, if you have any questions, drop him a message. Say, listen, this is my problem. Can you help me out? So